The term Gilded Age evokes a very certain image of America's emerging new money. High neckline gowns with corsets, excessive lifestyles, and of course, colossal ornate mansions. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Lucking, reporter for Mansion Global. Between the years 1880 and 1910, America saw an increase in wealth like never before, with business titans like John D. Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie as some of the era's biggest names. And while today's billionaires show off their money by way of super yachts, exotic cars, and even space travel, the moguls of the Gilded Age displayed their wealth with the lavish homes that they built in hopes that it would bring in more business. You may have a sense of the fashions of the time if you're caught up with HBO's new series, The Gilded Age. Christine Baranski and Cynthia Nixon star as two old money aunts who are displeased with their new money neighbors, especially as they get entangled with their niece. While architecture may not be the main focus of the show, viewers still get a look at what it was like to live in the opulent mansions of those days, adorned with elaborate mouldings, fireplaces and wood accents. As the wealthy left New York, or for some, when their funds dried up, many of these homes were demolished in the 1920s and then again in the 50s to build new commercial buildings. While many of the remaining residences have become museums or luxury shops, a few homes still remain for their original intended purpose. But what does owning one look like? On prestigious Fifth Avenue, across from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, is a 14,000 square foot home that was built in 1901. The home has only had four owners, and for the past 70 years, it served as the headquarters for the American Irish Historical Society instead of a residence. So the interiors have barely been touched. The Beaux-Arts style home has a brick and limestone exterior that's curved on its second and third floors. Inside, much of the original mouldings, wood panelling and stained glass remain intact. The 23 room townhouse is asking $44 million. Next, less than 10 blocks away is another Beaux-Arts style townhouse that's listed for 31.5 million. This East 88th Street home also has a grand exterior with a portico entrance, a shallow stoop and curved bay windows. Completed in 1903, it still has some original mantelpieces, plaster mouldings and woodwork, though you'll notice it's been renovated over the years for modern living. The six bedrooms and seven full bathrooms help make up the more than 10,000 square feet of interior space, while the backyard garden and rooftop terrace add another 2,100 square feet of outside space. To top it all off, that rooftop terrace overlooks Central Park and even has views of the neighboring Guggenheim Museum. And of course, you can't talk about the Gilded Age without mentioning the Vanderbilt family. The Vanderbilts built a number of mansions in Manhattan during this era, including Cornelius II's home that some say is the largest private residence Manhattan has ever seen. Though not an original Vanderbilt residence, this Gilded Age home that closed in March has ties to the iconic family. This neo grec style townhouse was the childhood home of the late heiress and blue jean designer, Gloria Vanderbilt. Located at East 72nd Street, the 27 foot wide townhouse has 11 bedrooms and spans more than 18,000 square feet. The home was listed for $36 million. Though the facade still maintains Gilded Age details, the interior has been entirely modernized, so you can live like the Vanderbilts, but with all the modern day comforts. What other TV homes are you dying to get into? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to hit subscribe for more.